my daughter, I just figured that that's what mommy's arms look like. And when she was little, it took me a while to figure out why she was doing it. She would take a pen and she would start to draw on her arms. And I couldn't figure out why and I would keep giving her paper, but she wouldn't draw on the paper. And then my father finally figured out and said that she was trying to make her arms look like me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's not what your arms are supposed to look like. My, uh, my grandfather died two days before the station fire, and I was originally going to go out and get something to wear to his wake and funeral because I just had a baby, so I didn't have anything. And I was going to go with my best friend when I called her. She had already made a commitment to go there, so she said, you know, just come. We'll figure out what you can wear later on. Just come out with us. We wiggled up towards the front. We were probably about three rows from the front. We joked about how they were squishing us all in there. It was just kind of a, a common thing to know that it was always overstuffed. They came on the stage. The fireworks or pyrotechnics went off and I remember being surprised that they had that and then I saw in the ceiling where there was a fire starting. So I grabbed my best friend's hand, and we looked at each other, and we just started to head out. We got probably not quite to the door when all the lights went out. And um, then you could feel like the pushing of everybody else trying to get out. And I got pushed past where the front door was, and my friend got pushed towards the door. And I could feel Carrie's hand slipping from me. That's what I knew. You were scared then? Yeah. I got pushed past where the door was, and I just, I vaguely remember when we got there, noticing the big windows, and you could see the people in the bar, and for whatever reason, it stuck in my head, so I kind of, I, or I hoped in my head, I knew the direction of it, and I just kept trying to head in that direction, but um, there were so many people and it was dark, I kept getting pushed down. I could feel um, a weird, tingling, painful sensation on my arms, and I'm sure it hurt more than my mind registered it. I was just focusing on every time I fell down to try and get back up, try not to breathe too much, and to keep heading in the direction that I hoped um, the windows were. I had fallen down, and um, strangely enough, I was actually going to just stay there because it was just too much, but I knew everybody would be mad at me. <laughs> and my dad would be mad, and everyone would expect that I would have fought to the bitter end, so I rallied, and I um, used the wall to kind of get back up. The window was already broken when I got there, so I know people had to have gone up before. I don't think many people probably got out after me. And I just kind of wandered over to um, a big snow mound, which was right under the station fire sign that's near the road. And I just put my skin back on and started putting snow on me. And then eventually, I got kind of corralled into um, Kwisid Inn. And Carrie's family was there and they had Carrie, but she was like on the other side of the wall. So they kind of correspond between the two of us. One would stay with me, her sister would stay with me, her mom would stay with her, and then they'd kind of switch. Got me in the rescue, and they brought me to Rhode Island Hospital. I had um, inhaled so much smoke, it damaged my lungs, so they put me in a medical-induced coma for six days. Lamar Jade was two and a half months the night of the fire. So the only thing that was sad was when I got home, I couldn't, I couldn't hold her really for any length of time. They'd have to kind of prop her up with pillows. So I couldn't really feed her, I couldn't change her. I was a little nervous that I wouldn't, you know, bond. We wouldn't have that bond, but nope, we have the bond. <laughs> so that, that was a little sad, but 
We did good. Thank you.